Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Lab Setup. In this vSphere 5 course, we'll be using a virtualization lab to walk you through the installation, configuration, and administration of vSphere 5. So why should you build your own virtualization lab? Well, first off, to get hands-on experience with vSphere 5. While you'll learn a lot in this course, you'll learn even more by performing these steps for yourself hands-on. A virtualization lab is also great to prove that vSphere 5 works as advertised. That way you can do it for yourself on your own equipment. You can show your coworkers and your boss. You could also use that lab to prove that vSphere works for your company's applications. And finally, a virtualization lab is a great way to help you to prepare for a certification like the VMware Certified Associate, the VCP, or the VCAP. There's really two ways to build a virtualization lab. The first way would be to create a virtual virtualization lab using either VMware Workstation or VMware Fusion. With these options, you're running ESXi as a virtual machine on your existing Windows or Mac OS desktop or laptop system. The second way would be to build a physical virtualization lab. In other words, use real hardware and real servers to install ESXi on. And of course, there's pros and cons to each of these different options. When it comes to building a virtual virtualization lab, some of the limitations are, first off, you have to have a 64-bit CPU with Intel VT or AMD enabled. You'll need a lot of RAM. I would say a minimum of 4 gigabytes, but the more RAM you have, the better. You may not be able to power on any 64-bit virtual machines that are running as guests underneath the ESXi servers that you're running as virtual machines in Workstation or Fusion. This is called 64-bit nested virtual machines, and today it just isn't something that's possible. Also, fault tolerance isn't going to work, I can tell you that, because fault tolerance requires specific CPU hardware. And when ESXi is running as a virtual machine, it's not going to recognize that. And then finally, to be honest, performance may suffer. I mean, you're trying to run an entire virtual infrastructure on a desktop or a laptop system. You have to think about that. You might want to power up two ESXi servers, say a Windows 2008 server uh, that's acting as the uh, DNS server, maybe another Windows 2008 server that's acting as your vCenter server, and then finally even a VSA or a virtual storage appliance, something like OpenFiler inside a virtual machine. I mean, that would give you a complete virtual infrastructure, but think about all of the hardware requirements and all the resources that all those virtual machines are going to consume from your existing desktop or laptop system. So I can tell you it may work, but it just may run very, very slow. So these are some of the limitations to keep in mind if you opt to build a virtual lab. On the other hand, a virtual lab has its own set of benefits. I mean, you're not spending very much on hardware. You may be able to use your existing desktop or laptop system. You could do it all with completely free 60-day evaluation licenses of VMware Workstation and VMware vSphere. And if you install it on a laptop, it could be portable. So you could even take it out to customer sites or take it, let's say, to a trade show to do a demonstration. So in summary, building a virtual virtualization lab is a very cool thing to do, but it has its own set of good and bad that you need to recognize. No matter which option you choose to create your own vSphere lab, I should point out that having shared storage available in that lab is important. That's because it's required to use and test vSphere's advanced features. Features like vMotion, SVMotion, SDRS, DRS, VMHA, and more. Now, it may not be needed with just one single ESXi server, but once you have more than one ESXi host and you want to play with some of these advanced features, you'll find that you need some shared storage. So the different options available for shared storage, first off, you could get a low-end SAN or NAS, kind of like the little iOmega iX4 that you see there. In fact, that's what I have in my lab. You could also turn a physical server into a NAS by, say, loading something like OpenFiler on it, or you could use a virtual storage appliance, for example, running OpenFiler as a virtual machine inside ESXi, or using the new vSphere 5 VSA that turns a minimum of two ESXi servers into a virtual storage area network. If you do go the virtual lab route, here's a few things you should know about running vSphere in VMware Workstation. This is actually the configuration that I used for the few times in this course that I created a lesson using the virtual lab option. So what I did is I used VMware Workstation version 7, that's the latest version, and ESXi 5. In fact, VMware Workstation 7 supports running ESX and ESXi as virtual machines without editing any configuration files like you used to have to do in previous versions of Workstation. I ran it on Windows 7, and I had a laptop, a Samsung laptop, in fact, 
with an i7 chip. Uh, it's a 64-bit CPU with VT enabled, and I had 6 gigs of RAM. That's my basic setup, and it works very well, of course, with the same caveats that I mentioned before about running a virtual lab. If you try to run too much on it, uh, you're going to run into a lot of performance contention and a lot of slowdowns. But still, to create a relatively free, inexpensive, portable virtual infrastructure, it works very well. Throughout the creation of this vSphere 5 video training course, there were actually multiple labs that were used to create the various lessons in the course, and that's especially true because we had two authors working on the course at the same time. Now, the first lab is my home office lab, which is comprised of two Dell T610 servers with 8 gigs of RAM each and Xeon 5500 series CPUs. I also have an iOmega iX4 200D NAS that I leave enabled for iSCSI and NFS. And this lab works very well. It costs under $5,000 US, and it's able to perform just about every advanced vSphere feature available today, even including VMware fault tolerance. The second vSphere lab that was used in the course was actually my laptop. Uh, for a couple of the lessons, I would record using my laptop lab, which is a Samsung i7 laptop with 6 gigs of RAM running VMware Workstation. It works very well to learn about and practice the more basic features of vSphere, but it's not going to work for demonstrating something, let's say, like VMware Fault Tolerance or SDRS. The third lab used in the creation of this course is actually a rack of Fujitsu Blade servers uh, that Elias primarily used when he created his lessons. Each of these Blade servers have 256 gigs of RAM. It's a really amazing vSphere lab. And I think it's unlikely that most VMware admins out there are going to have a lab like this to play with, but there are some admins out there, let's say in the enterprise, where you might have a few extra blade servers or a few extra servers that no one's using for a project for some period of time, and those servers could be used to create your own vSphere lab. So the point in showing you all this is not only to give you some behind-the-scenes look at how the course was created, but also to give you the idea that there's various options for creating your own vSphere lab, and to recommend that you should take a look at all the options available to you and try to do whatever you can do to make your vSphere lab happen so that you can practice everything you learn in this course and future courses. So in summary, in this lesson, I covered how to build your own vSphere lab, to learn vSphere, and to create your own proof of concept related to virtualization for your company. There's so many different ways to build vSphere labs, and virtual vSphere labs are the least expensive and most portable way, but they're also the least functional and more prone to performance issues. On the other hand, physical vSphere labs vary greatly in cost, but they offer the most opportunity to test advanced features without potential performance issues. Thanks for watching this lesson covering the lab setup used to create our vSphere 5 video training course.